Hey everyone, uh, thank you for joining uh, today. Uh, you are joining the Nutrition for Sport and Performance uh, post-grad session. Uh, my name is Adam Upshaw, I'm the program coordinator for this particular program. Uh, it's uh, fairly new, it's only uh, three years uh, in existence, but uh, nevertheless it has gathered quite a bit of interest uh, simply because of its uh, content for sure around nutrition and sport performance and exercise and health but also for uh, the delivery format by which we can offer the program. And so we'll be going over uh, those things today. If, of course, if you have any questions, please make note and then fire them off uh, towards the end of the session and be happy to get those to you, uh, absolutely. So uh, a couple of things I do want to address with you before um, we finish up here today is, is really on what the program is about, uh, why it's an attractive program, uh, who's it for, who can benefit from it, and then also how it's how it's delivered. So let me share a little bit about the program and then uh, I'll share some of the benefits uh, uh, for for you, uh, the student. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Adam Asha. My background is in sports nutrition. <clears throat> and so I make up part of the team in the delivery of some of the courses uh, pretty much up front. Uh, some of the courses that you get in the in the fall term. I take handle of those. This is our team for this year. So uh, some other folks might uh, switch in and out there. They're on contract and they have, you know, uh, their own jobs and they're highly valued within the industry. And so uh, it's not every term that they they become available. But this is what we have right now. But I do highlight this to show you that our team is, is mixed of uh, research, nutritional research uh, and performance professionals sort of like myself, who also have the ex exercise background. So we can amalgamate those two things into, into, the, into the program. And then we also have industry experts, uh, like George Jansen, Nancy Guest, for example, Victoria Upshaw, they are RDs, registered dietitians, who also carry a business and sport perspective to the program. And I think, as you are aware, we also provide a culinary course to the program, which is one of the highlights of the program as well. And uh, for that, we use industry experts in nutrition to complement our chef experts. Uh, so we had, we had uh, Chef Kyle Landry from our uh, Niagara-on-the-Lake campus uh, deliver that culinary course. And I'll speak to that uh, in a little bit, what that would look like. But uh, you can see that our team is quite diverse in what we can provide in terms of our backgrounds and what we can bring to the table. So one of the main, main areas of question that I have received uh, over the course of the years with respect to this program is the course delivery because it is different than most other programs, if not all other programs at Niagara College and certainly across uh, the region and the Ontario uh, college system. And so let me just share with you a little bit of how this course delivery works. Uh, we use online format, of course, it is an online program hopefully any of that. Um, and uh, Blackboard is, if you're unfamiliar with Blackboard, it's not a big deal. It, it's basically just a platform that the college uses to deliver uh, the online courses. So it's not delivered through Zoom or anything like that. It's our official platform that we utilize that also has an online uh, uh, capability and we can deliver the, the program that way fairly well with a lot of interaction opportunities so it's not just you watching videos, it is uh, in fact uh, engaging uh, with the students and it has that back and forth component. So um, it doesn't matter if you're familiar with it, we have orientation sessions that we provide you before the program begins. And so uh, you can certainly uh, tune into those and get a good handle on how our system works. But if I just share with you something that uh, we use this year, so this, this is just a simple calendar from, covering September really, and what the courses sort of looked like. So how the delivery works for the courses, and I'll show you all those courses in a moment, but if you just pay attention uh, to this part right here that I'm gonna share with you, the courses are delivered in three week blocks. So over the course of the fall term, so we're talking about September through to December, there are five courses that you take, much like you would take in a regular full-time program except because we're working with folks who are generally, um, you know, generally have jobs part-time or full-time, 
it's, it's considered a little bit easier for the student to focus in on one course at a time versus focusing on five courses at a time. So the program is full time. However, you're only focusing on one course at, the, at a time. Now, what that means is the first course that you see on your screen in that highlight box there, uh, exercise physiology, that's your first course. And you'd get that course over the course of three weeks. So it's three weeks intensive of that one course only. So although it's only one course at a time, like I mentioned, it is full time, which means that course is fairly intense as are the other ones afterwards. Um, but, you know, in terms of assignments and readings, what do I need to do for this course and that course? There's none of that because you're only focusing on one course at a time. So it's a great benefit to folks who are working part time or even full time or who are doing other education at the same time. Uh, and so if you take a look there, you'll see uh, that exercise physio physiology course runs from the 9th and then carries all the way till the 27th at the bottom of your screen on the left hand side. And then the new course nutrition assessment begins on the 28th. And so more or less what you're given is maybe a day uh, to kind of relax a little bit and then uh, the next course begins. But all the material, all the assessments, examinations are done within that three and a half week course, uh, or sorry, three and a half week time frame. All the assessments and everything are done within that, that particular time frame. So uh, it is intense. There's a lot to do for sure. There's a lot of reading to do. Uh, the live, all the live lectures are delivered in that time. If you're not attending live, I'll speak to you about in a second. They are recorded, and so you can attend those recorded sessions. But you do need to keep up. It can't be like I'll shove all the courses in in December. That's not how the program works. The program is very structured in that you must complete this first course, exercise physiology, in this example right here, by the 27th of September. The grades are the, the exam will be there. You see it on the 26th. Take a look at the 26th on the calendar there. You'll see that's the final test or final exam for that first course. So uh, you do have to keep up with the schedule that we uh, initiate, but you do have the liberty to, you know, do the readings on your own time within that time block, do some of the assessments on your own time within certain parameters, and also. Um, uh, attend the lectures uh, on your own time, again, within certain parameters in that time block. Uh, so quickly, you see here for this course, the instructor, which was me for this course, uh, decided to put the assignments, you know, on one particular date, um, sorry, due on a day, which was Sunday. All assignments will be due on Sunday, so that there's no confusion. You don't have to think about that. And that's how the kind of the program structures itself across all courses so that there's very little, uh, uh, you know, when's this due, when's that due, it's pretty much everything's due on Sundays. Just check your calendar that we provide to you to see if uh, you have an assignment due that Sunday, because uh, or that week and it will be due on the Sunday just to keep things less confusing. Uh, but that's how it's how it works, the delivery. So if I can sum it up, their, their course is delivered one at a time over the course of three, three and a half weeks. And then you move on to the next course and you have to follow the structure that we, we provide in terms of you have to do course one to move on to course two, so on and so forth throughout until December, you get your break, and then you continue on in January in the same sort of format. Okay, so that's how the courses are delivered. Uh, this is kind of the structure that we might provide you in terms of instructions for each course. It's just an example. You don't have to pay much attention to it. I just bring it up here now to show you how each course in terms of the lectures uh, or the discussion periods are delivered. So if you take a look here, you see course times, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays for this uh, course called Nutrition Assessment for Sport and Exercise. You see the title at the top there. If you take a look at the course times in the middle of your screen, you'll see Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, as I said, 11 to 1 Eastern time on those days. What does that mean? That basically means this course was delivered live during that time period um, for that, I think that was for those weeks uh, for this course, because this course had a, had a lot of um, additional things you had to do on your own uh, in terms of reading assignments and, and some lab work uh, on your own. Won't get into that, but uh, just so you know, the course times there were um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 to 1, which means those are the live sessions. 
you are able to attend those sessions, uh, live sessions, if you wish. If you're unable to attend those sessions, then you can watch the recordings. Now we try and keep the delivery of the sessions around the same time for each term, but uh, that can be difficult with the different instructors. Uh, you will be provided as students who register for the program with details of when the live lectures will be for the courses. And you'll be provided that um, by myself, the program coordinator, sometime in August, uh, July or August, about when the courses will be delivered live. But it's not a big deal if you can't attend them live. Uh, all instructors have availability for Q&A, so live Q&A sessions outside of the live uh, lectures. And also, um, you can watch the recordings. All live sessions are recorded, so you can watch those the same day, the next day. But of course, if the live sessions are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you don't want to fall too far behind. I mean, you can hammer it out all on Friday if you choose. That's the freedom of the program. That's why it's structured this way, to give you some flexibility in how you manage uh, your time and the workload. Okay, so um, that's how we sort of run the program. That's how the course are delivered. If you can't go live, then you watch recording. We have about, I don't know, from this past year, I'd say about 70% of the students attended live and the rest were pretty regular on the recordings. Uh, and then also engaging in some of those live Q and A sessions that the instructors would hold or simply even just making appointments with the instructors uh, themselves if they needed some live interaction in that way. Okay, but all the group work that you might have to do, uh, all the interaction pieces, it is pretty much equally distributed whether or not you attend live. Obviously you get a different sense in the in interaction piece in the group work if it's live versus recorded, but uh, no matter how you attend the sessions, uh, you pretty much get the same experience of uh, the lecture. Okay, so that's how we deliver um, the courses. And you can see here, um, this is what I provide the students for lecture schedule and assignments. Like I said, you have things like online posting to do and reflection pieces and discussions online uh, with uh, fellow classmates. And that's part of a, an assessment, a graded assessment that you do. So there's a lot of interaction pieces, there's a lot of engagement with the other students, even though you're not in the classroom with them, you will get to know them virtually fairly well um, until, of course, culinary week, which uh, whereby that is the in-person part, which I'll discuss uh, shortly. Uh, so yeah, online posts are, are part of it and everything like that, so on and so forth. There are many assessment and tests to do for each course. We give you what we call a TLP, which is a teaching and learning plan. Um, and of course, those fall by the same structure as the rest of the program in terms of you know uh quality of assignments submitted so they have to be on time if there is a due date you have to submit it by that due date i tell you this because some people who think an online program is like oh i can do whatever i want whenever i want it well that's not really the case um we do allow freedom as i mentioned to structure around your your other commitments but uh there are some guidelines that still need to be followed and so I just show you that uh, just to make sure you don't go in with uh, come into this unknowingly thinking you can do the assignments whenever you please, um, because that's not really the structure. It's a formal educational program uh, being offered. Okay, it's a formal post grad program. Uh, we use ebooks. So if you're worried about how do I access textbooks, we use a few of them and they're delivered through ebooks. This is just one of them, Nutrition Basics, for example. Uh, and we provide you with how to access the material and so on. It's nothing uh, too complicated for you to do. If I give you a list of the courses that you'll be doing, uh, these are them. So I'll just run through them quickly. I'm not going to go through detail. You can access all that information on the website for nutrition, sport, performance um, on the Niagara College website. If you click on courses, it will give you the details of each and every course that's there. So not going to do that with you for the sake of time, but I can go through a uh, certain example of what the, what the delivery would be again. So you're going to start off with exercise physiology and metabolism, which is basically the blend of exercise and 
nutrition. So this is a very good course for people because we have folks coming into the program who are nutrition experts. We have people coming in to the program who are exercise experts and some have both, most have one or the other. And so this exercise physiology metabolism course is, can be very easy for the exercise folks. Although we do take an advanced stance on this exercise physiology. So it's, it can be easier, let's say for the exercise uh, folks in the program. Uh, and it will be a little more difficult for the nutrition folks who don't have the exercise background, no doubt. So you'll probably have to work a little bit harder if you're the nutrition folks. But then you go to the course too, which is nutrition assessment for sport and exercise. And that is heavily nutrition, obviously, based. And the nutrition folks sort of breeze through that because it's sort of the introduction to nutrition assessment, a review of some of the nutritional principles that you would have acquired in your undergraduate nutrition programs. And uh, our exercise folks will have to work much harder in that course. So it's kind of a mix, right, in those first two courses. And then we get into stuff that's probably a little bit new for most people. The third course, Contemporary Issues in Sport and Exercise Nutrition, which is basically looking at nutritional research and how to properly evaluate nutritional research in the sports world. Uh, performance nutrition for special populations. So we're looking at young and older adults. So how do nutrition principles apply equally across young uh adult and older adults? Uh, the answer is no, there are differences. And so uh, that's the course uh, for that. Uh, we have some business courses related to interprofessional communication, how to establish a business, if that's what you would like to do or get enhancement on for your current business that you might be running. That's the course there. And that pretty much breaks up the term in December. And then you come back in for some pretty heavy courses in nutrition prescription for athletes and for, uh, so it can be elite, can be recreational athletes, kind of your weekend warriors. So that's nutrition periodization for endurance athletes. And then you go on to strength athletes. Then you have another uh, nutrition for special populations course, which deals with folks who may have some uh, impairment or perhaps some physical disability um, or cognitive uh, disability or impairment. Uh, that might affect their ability to participate in sports. So you go through a variety of uh, conditions and uh, any nutritional modifications that you might need to make for those specific conditions are considered within that course. So if you're work, looking to work with um, classified special population it's outside um, the normal range or the typical range of, of uh, exercise nutrition, then that's what that course is about. Then we get into ergogenic aids, which are supplements, basically. So the world of sports supplements and how they might be effective, which ones are, which ones aren't. And of course, looking at the prohibited over the counter. And then uh, to finish it off, you deal with a practicum and a culinary course, uh, which I'll discuss uh, now. So your culinary course goes for a week. So this occurs at the end of the term. And this occurs at our Niagara on the Lake campus, which is in Niagara on the Lake, uh, close to Niagara Falls. And uh, this is an in-person requirement. So you come to the culinary labs, beautiful facilities over on Niagara on the Lake. Uh, you stay here in accommodations for uh, five days. So that is an, a little bit of an additional expense. It's not crazy expense, but it is a little bit of additional expense to it. And you basically attend class all day for five days. So it's pretty much like an eight to five kind of experience whereby you're finally meeting your classmates. Uh, you get to hang out afterwards. You get to engage with the chefs. You get to eat the food. You get to visit our brewery. You get to visit our winery. Uh, you get to visit um, our food and innovation, uh, whereby they can, you know, test different foods, do a lot of food chemistry, if you will. Uh, so it's a pretty intensive week, even outside of the, the actual content for the program, which is, you know, related to sport. Uh, you get to do all those other uh, uh, cool things kind of after the work day, you know. Uh, so it's just a good experience over the course of that week. Usually goes Monday through Friday. Uh, this is just what it would look like, would have looked like for this year. We're a little bit under uh, COVID, but uh, 
we've had to modify a little bit. Nevertheless, it would have looked something like this. You start on Monday super early, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you go nine to six. Uh, you know, you, you're doing things throughout the day and then uh, you make something or a few things and you eat them. And so you can share dinner together with classmates and the chefs and, and so on and so forth. And end of time uh, on Saturday, we use, usually like a wrap up either Saturday morning or Friday night, just depending on that particular year, how the schedule goes. And that's pretty much the week. So it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty uh, intensive. We do have accommodations. Uh, this is for this year. We don't really need to worry about that right now, but um, there are accommodations here. And if you look at the culinary schedule or the week schedule, it would look like this. Um, so you'd see at the top uh, row, you'd see uh, the topic. So basic culinary skills, boot camp. So what does that look like? Well, that would be food and safety. That would be knife skills, cooking demonstrations, how to deliver those. That's key for nutrition uh, folks. If you're working with varsity athletes, for example, or you're working with clubs and you're delivering nutrition information, it'd be great to add or to even sell a, you know, like a cooking demonstration as part of what you can offer. And so you learn how to properly do that on the fly, on the go, right? You're not in a, you know, you don't have an oven and a kitchen, but how do you do it on the fly, on the go? So proper cooking demonstration skills. And then you get into the more specifics, you know, the culmination of things that you've learned throughout the year, and you add that into a culinary uh, component. So it's fine to talk about, you know, how to modify a food for someone who might be, who might have a gluten intolerance or someone who's trying to cut down on their added sugars. You know, it's fine to say, uh, let's just cut out the white table sugar from this muffin and add in uh, maple syrup. Um, it's fine to say, well, let's just replace the wheat flour with some gluten-free oat flour that we blend, uh, we shred down in the blender to a flour or almond flour or something like that. It's fine to say that in terms of, well, it provides you with protein, you're still getting some good fiber, it's all good, but uh, does it actually translate into a, a baked good or a cooking item that's actually taste worthy uh, and texture worthy? And so what you do throughout this week is you under, start to understand, start to get a grasp of how those uh, changes, how those food modifications that you need to make for athletes and people who exercise in general how those food modifications actually translate into a final product in terms of a culinary product. And so you can see there drinks and shakes on Tuesday, for example, and then some vegan dishes. And it's more, it's beyond just, you know, finding a recipe that's vegan and, and doing it. It's also about learning how to cook at the same time. So for example, if you're doing, uh, or vegan example to use, uh, meatloaf, for example, well, that doesn't work for vegan obviously so might you might do something like a lentil loaf okay well it's pretty easy to to find a recipe and to learn how to cook you know a lentil loaf or to make a lentil loaf but beyond that you're also learning the nutritional principles of course as they apply to sport and exercise and how that might benefit an athlete um so you might look at lentils and beans and legumes and pulses like you might look at the whole spectrum there and how it applies to benefiting an athlete uh, but also you get to learn how to you know cook lentils and you look at the background around lentils for example i'm just giving that one example um and so it's more than just making things so when you say when i say drinks and shakes it's like oh we blend things uh no it's more than that of course um but that's sort of the focus of what you're doing different options and how they actually work, how it actually translates into a culinary experience. The more information you have on the final product of a culinary item, the more information you can generally give a client and the more modifications you can generally provide to a client. So that's the purpose ultimately of the culinary. Uh, and so if I just continue on Wednesday, you go from vegan to full on meat dishes and, and uh, you know, different cooking items, um, mechanics that you might use to, to cook different meats and fishes and chicken, for example. And then Thursday, Friday would be like baking substitutions. You know, if you make a batch of cookies one way, 
you know, eliminating baking soda, for example, what it, why the heck do I need to put baking soda and baking powder in a product? Well, you taste test, let's say a strip of cookies that had different components in them, one made with liquid sugar versus solid sugar. That was the only change. You know, you might've swapped out apples or butter for applesauce as, as the fat or the oil. Um, you may have eliminated the baking soda and, you know, threw in buttermilk and, or something like that. So you just sort of, or sorry, baking powder into the buttermilk. So you're just, you know, you're getting an understanding of the chemistry, the food chemistry behind some of these products. And then you apply it. If you look at the second row, you apply it to a diff different athletes. So vegan athletes, CrossFit athletes, endurance athletes, gluten-free athletes, low sugar athletes. So people trying to, uh, low sugar and low calorie athletes. So people trying to make weight, for example, uh, whether that be an endurance or strength athlete, you know, there are a lot of sports cycling, for example, running where they would like to reduce weight in order to compete. So close to their event, they might reduce their weight. So they weigh less, but are still strong enough. So weight to power ratio is better. And same with strength athletes, right? Uh, trying to make weight in a lot of different sports uh, would apply there. And so that's what the culinary week look like, looks like. It's very, it's very good. It's uh, kind of a highlight of the program for sure. Absolutely. Uh, so that's the focus. Um, and then one other last component that you have as part of the program is the placement. Uh, the placement has varied, honestly, over the, over the years that we've done this program. So we're just trying to find the right fit because we have people from across the country really taking in the program, uh, which is why, you know, we can't find that right time to deliver live lectures, right? Because it might not work for people on the West Coast and the East Coast. And we have folks all across the country taking the program. So we've also struggled with the placement uh, component as well. You know, how do we find placements across um, the province? So what has been decided is that our placement's gonna take place uh, during the last week of the program. So that culinary week, uh, let me just back up. You finish your winter term, the five courses in the winter, you finish those courses in April last uh, third week of April, let's say. The culinary week usually takes place right after that. So last week of April, kind of into May, that's the culinary week. And what we've done with placement is we've decided that as you're finishing up that culinary week, so maybe like on the Thursday or the Friday, we will introduce to you this placement opportunity that you will have to complete, uh, it's either by the I can't remember the exact date, but it's either by the end of May or the beginning of June. The placement opportunity uh, that we've come up with, I mean, this year it was going to be the Niagara Ultra. Next year it might be something different. Uh, the Niagara Ultra Marathon, where they do 50K, well, they do a full marathon, 42K, and they do 50K and 100K run. Uh, we were going to have students engage with those athletes and to provide them with a full nutritional plan. So after that culinary week, towards the end, uh, which would be the end of April, uh, we would introduce the placement. Uh, so while you're all together, now you're on the lake, we'd introduce the placement. We would gather the folks who have registered from that race, the Niagara Ultra, they would have registered to get a student to provide them with a nutritional plan, which would be about a 30 day nutritional plan or, or six weeks or a nutritional plan to get them down to race weight, which takes place in June. Their race takes place in June, the Niagara Ultra. Ultra. Uh, and so that was the placement opportunity whereby you would meet them in person, Niagara on the Lake when you're here, uh, sort of get background information, do nutrition assessment. We'd have the body composition tools and equipment there available for you excuse me, you do all their screening, everything that you would have learned uh, throughout the program, you would do at that point. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, you'd be working and tweaking their nutritional plan so that either they can spend three or four weeks uh, reducing their weight, following the plan so that they reduce their weight, but don't lose any power. Or you can provide them with a nutritional plan, let's say, for race day and, and post recovery, or perhaps they have another race because they are highly competitive athletes. That's the bulk that you'd be working with. 
And you have myself as a supervisor to guide you on this nutritional plan. You'd have also other uh, folks, instructors doing that as well. And so that would have been the placement opportunity this past year. Next year, we might engage something very similar. And so that's where placement lies. Instead of sending you off to various parts around the country whereby we don't really know exactly what's going on, uh, we find that if you're working with high level athletes and direct supervision, um, and we can introduce uh, the whole opportunity to you in person, that was usually the best fit. So that's, that's probably the best fit, sorry. So that's what we're gonna run with. That's the placement opportunity. So you can expect as a placement, if I can give you this promise, if you will, is that uh, you'll be working with folks who are highly trained individuals, whether it's endurance athletes or strength athletes, or maybe we'll find something that's a little bit of a mix. Uh, you'll be working with highly trained athletes. You'll have to provide them with some sort of nutrition counseling. You'll have to take all of the information that you have learned, that you have gathered, and then provide that um, to them as a placement opportunity. Okay, so that would be uh, placement. And uh, like I said, it starts uh, towards the end of the term. And that's basically the program. Uh, it's super fast. It goes by really quick. It's one year, but because it's back to back each course, hammering away, you know, you get that little breather in December, but then you're right back at it in January, all the way through April. And you come here for culinary week. And at the same time, or in addition to, you have placement to do. And so it's a lot uh, for sure. Considered a full-time program, it is full-time but our delivery method makes it feasible for a lot of folks to do other things at the same time. And so I hope uh, that it interests you, I think you can benefit from it. Exercise professionals, nutritional professionals who wanna start their own business, uh, working with either athletes, recreational athletes, this is for you. Nutritional, nutrition professor, uh, professionals who want to have that sport and exercise component added to your background. This is definitely a program uh, formal education uh, for you as well. And then our exercise folks who are lacking some of the nutrition or just need a little bit more of that nutrition to feel a little bit more confident in what they're delivering uh, in their exercise world, um, this would be for you as well. So there's a lot of opportunity for self-business. There's a lot of opportunity for working in industry um, as either nutrition or exercise professional who also carries uh, post-grad in sports nutrition. So uh, that's the bulk of the program. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me anytime. Be happy to answer those questions. Find my email address there. And uh, other than that, I hope uh, hope to see many of you, all of you, uh, come uh, come September 2021. All right, everyone, stay safe. Take care. Thanks.